fats and oils. Well, first of all, we better point out the origin of these substances. The fats have an animal origin. For example, yeah, animal fat, something called suet or lard. It's a solid. It's not a very pleasant material. The oil can be animal or plant in origin. Animal or plant source. Animal oils might include cod liver oil or whale oil. The plant oils might be linseed oil or sunflower oil and so on. But oils are liquid. Why do we find ourselves speaking about these substances? Well, surprisingly, these substances, fats and oils, are esters. Now, it's really rather surprising because they're not typical esters. An ester has a sickly, sweet smell. Esters are typically used for food flavouring, perfumes, and solvents. They're good at dissolving substances. Fats and oils don't really seem to fit the category, and yet they're esters. How can these possibly be esters? Well, it's down to their structure. Let's go back to basics. What is an ester? An ester is made when a carboxylic acid reacts with an alcohol. So if these substances are esters, it begs the question, what alcohol and acid are they made from? So if our ester is a fat or an oil, what are the ingredients? Well, what makes these esters unusual is that the alcohol and acids are unusual. The alcohol is unusual because it's a triple alcohol. It has three OH groups, three hydroxyl groups. Your normal, typical acid, sorry, your normal, typical alcohol would only have one of these OH groups. This is an alcohol called glycerol. Some people call it glycerin, glycerol. And as for the acid, what makes it unusual is its sheer size. A normal carboxylic acid might have two, three, four carbon atoms. This thing has 16, 18, 20, maybe up to 24 carbon atoms. Here's a typical example. Something like C17, H35, COOH, there. 17 plus 1, 18 carbon atoms, a monster of a molecule. These are something called fatty acids. And they're called fatty acids because, you guessed it, they're the kind of acids that you find in fats and oils. If we remember the basics here, then we'll understand this very simply. Because we're still dealing with ester chemistry, and ester chemistry is all about molecules joining. You recall that when the acid molecule and the alcohol molecule join, water is lost. We call it condensation. But because this alcohol has three OH groups, this process could happen three times. So then it is happening a second time, and yet again. So we end up with a colossal molecule, one of the biggest molecules you've met in the course. There we are, condensation, losing water, three times over. Fatty acid, glycerol. What does the ester look like? Well, the ester is simply these molecules joined together. So we have, we have this acid having lost its OH. The alcohol has simply lost an H. And it's all kind of bolted together. So the molecules look something like this. It's hard to visualize this. It's hard to imagine what it looks like in reality. It's a very long carbon chain. That's the end of the acid. There's where the alcohol begins. But as we said, it's a triple alcohol, so we end up with three of these joined on. A complex looking structure. But like so much of this chemistry, it looks complex, but it's just the same basic idea it keeps coming out. So that's the sort of shape that a, a fat or an oil would have. Now the next question we need to ask is, what makes a fat a fat and an oil an oil? Let's compare them. Oil, fat. 
If you were actually presented with molecules, models of these molecules, you'd have to look pretty close to spot the difference. The difference is very slight sometimes. An oil has double bonds. A fat tends not to have double bonds, it tends to have single bonds. So the presence of one or more double bonds in this big molecule makes it oily, whereas the absence of double bonds makes it more fatty. Why can such a small difference I mean that oils are for liquid, L for liquid, and fats are solid. Well, let's work this out. A long carbon chain can be represented as a zigzag pattern. Carbon chain. A carbon chain with a double bond tends to have a bit of a kink in the structure. Double bonds can have this effect. What it means is that when fatty molecules fit together, they fit together very, very snugly. They fit together with lots of intermolecular bonding. The, the, the molecules will link together. And all this intermolecular bonding makes it hard to melt and makes it solid. But these oily molecules with this rather strange structure will not fit together very well. So what will happen here is there'll be very few inter molecular bonds. You try fitting these molecules together with these funny shapes and they won't fit together very well and if they don't fit together well there will not be many bonds between them, they will be easy to melt. So easy to melt because there are few intermolecular bonds, harder to melt because they have more. Another point that might crop up in the course is this and that is that an oily molecule, and I'll simplify things by drawing it like this, an oily molecule can be turned into a fatty molecule by simply getting rid of that double bond. If, how can we get rid of this double bond? If we manage to turn a double bond into a single bond, we have effectively gone from oil to fat, from liquid to solid. Well, you have to remember that the double bond is part of a hydrocarbon chain. And so to turn it from a double bond into a single bond, we simply have to add hydrogen. And this is done in practice. Oils are turned into fats simply by adding some hydrogen. There are names for this process, I guess we could call it an addition reaction. That, after all, is what we call adding something across a double bond. Adding hydrogen can be called hydrogenation. And there's one other expression that's used here, and that's hardening. Because we've gone from liquid to solid. So to summarise, fats and oils look complicated, but you have to see them what they are. They're just slightly complicated esters. They're still acids and alcohols joined together. The difference between them is down to the fact that the oil has a double bond and the fat doesn't. Having this double bond produces this peculiar shape which makes them hard, the molecules hard to join and easy to melt. These have a very regular shape, lots of intermolecular bonds, harder to melt. And finally, we can turn oil into fat by adding hydrogen. This process is the manufacture of margarine. We start with oily materials such as sunflower oil and by adding hydrogen in the correct conditions, you don't need to know the conditions, probably use a catalyst, we end up with something like margarine.